A string is a sequence of characters. In Java, we write string literals like double quote ABC double quote with double quotes and not single quotes surrounding the list of characters. Here is what the Java API web page for class string looks like. The description tells us that the class represents character strings. Note that a string is immutable. It cannot be changed. We'll talk more about that later when we get into object-oriented programming more. This more detailed picture of a string shows you that, in Java, the characters of a string are numbered 0, 1, 2, and so on. When talking about a string s, we often use a notation s sub k to denote the character at index or position k. This notation is useful even if it isn't Java. In the same way, s sub h dot dot k denotes the substring of s that contains the characters s sub h, s sub h plus 1, all the way down to s sub k. The notation s sub h dot dot denotes the substring of s starting at h and going to the end. Finally, s sub h dot dot h minus 1 denotes the empty string starting at position h. At this point, we introduce the major functions used on strings. First, about notation. For a string variable s, the syntax for a call on a function like length consists of the name s, a period, the function name, and the arguments of the call in parentheses. Function length has no parameters, so there are no arguments. If you are new to OO programming, this may seem strange, but it will become clearer quite soon. On the screen appears a list of the functions with short specifications. We don't read them. You can stop the video at any time to read them more carefully. We do note that s.substring hk does not include character s sub k. Remember that. There are more functions shown to the right, but they are less frequently used. We now develop a function to show you how we tend to develop code, thinking in terms of English, not Java, and then translating into Java when we know what is to be done. This silly function we develop is designed to use many of the string functions. Here's the spec. S contains a list of at least one name. Adjacent names are separated by one or more space characters. If there's only one name, return it. Otherwise, return the first name but with its first character placed at the end and with all characters in uppercase. To start, let's remove the spaces at the beginning and end of S. Is there a function that can help us do this? Yes, trim. But be careful. The call s.trim does not change s, but produces a new string with the surrounding spaces removed. So we have to assign the result to s. Now we have to determine whether there is only one name. That's the case if there are no space characters, or blanks, in s. If there are at least two names, there's a blank after the first name. So let's look for the first blank. We use function index of and store the result in a new local variable k. Now, if k is negative 1, s contains no blank character, so s can be returned. Otherwise, we have to construct a string consisting of the last character of the first name which is just before the blank character s sub k. Catenated with everything that comes before s sub 0 dot dot k minus 2, but all in uppercase. Now let's translate this into Java. First comes s sub k minus 1. We use function char at. Next comes the substring s sub 0 through k minus 2. We use function substring, but note that the second argument is k minus 1 and not k minus 2, 
because of the way substring is defined. Now we have to make all those characters into uppercase. We use function to uppercase. We're done. Note that the code works if the first name is a single character. That's because s sub 0 dot dot minus 1 and s dot substring arguments 0 and 0 are both the empty string.